Okay. All right. This is great. I'm super excited to see so many people are, are joining us tonight and I'm excited to, um, be the first voice you hear, uh, and I'm going to be a uh, very, very brief and, uh, that way we can get into the Oh no. And stuff. So that's new that we're doing. We've decided that <clears throat> as a station, well, let me start off with the fact that, um, well, who we are as a CS CSK as a station, we are a non profit radio station. We've taken a lot of time over the last 11 years uh, as, an, as we've existed in Smithers to try to define what that means. And what that means to us is that we are uh, primarily a volunteer driven community station. All the programming is volunteer uh, and the broadcasting uh, comes from our beautiful Central Park uh, train car uh, that's 100 years old. And uh, we try to keep things fun and uh, produce radio uh, in a way that not, does more than just radio, but uh, also enhances the arts within our community and uh, helps sustain and elevate everybody uh, who's trying to create in, in, the, in this community that we live in. Um, we're certified by the CRTC to broadcast at 50 watts. Uh, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it actually does a pretty good job of, of filling in, uh, accessing most of the radios in our community. Um, and with that said, we also do uh, streaming as well uh, that reaches way beyond uh, the, the community here in Smithers. And uh, we're, um, we have listeners all around the world listening to CICK. And uh, not only that, but, um, but playing um, programs uh, when they would like it uh, through their through their internet connections. Thanks. Uh, that was Mission Valley. You can go to the next slide, actually. Um, what is community radio? I think a little bit of that. That's uh, radio programmed by volunteers. Uh, the That includes all the, that we do some podcasts that go through the station. They're all done by, by volunteers. There are aspects uh, that can happen where somebody may be making uh, or selling, uh, pr pr promoting their podcasts in a, in a pay for service, but not through our uh, website. So that's a separate thing. Um, our radio broadcast provides uh, musical diversity. Uh, it's local, it covers uh, local issues, we have local news. And what we're trying to do is have diff all these different values and visions and perspectives come under one roof in a way that helps fight the potential of uh, polarization that so easily uh, happens in communities. Um, our radio serves the needs of its local community. We, we always try to actively uh, try to reach aspects of our community that, that, we, that we feel isn't being represented in, on our station. So uh, always are looking for people who have differing perspectives that we feel are important to hear. And so uh, that's something we do on a, day, on a regular basis. Uh, radio that democratizes public media by making it accessible is something that's very important for us. Um, so uh, did I get, yeah, no, that's right. Uh, what does, why does community radio matter? It matters because it's an open medium. It allows people from every aspect of our community to uh, to, to reach an audience. Um, it allows people from all backgrounds to express opinions. It empowers it. It, uh, it really is an amazing and powerful medium that, that, uh, is available to everybody and it's free and we provide training and help you get on the radio and, and do what you envision doing. It's, it, it's, and there's so many once you're on the radio, it is just so much you can do. It's really can be a tool for so many different things. We have music programming. We have programming. We have programming that uh, you'll hear about some a little later about science. You'll you'll there's just every kind of thing you could possibly think of. We even had at one point flamenco dance on CICK. And you wouldn't think that flamenco dance would work, but hey, if you mic the the clumping of the of the feet, it actually makes for a really interesting sound. So, uh, yeah, we've done pretty much everything you can imagine. 
uh, community supported. So we try, yes. And so the aspect of our radio station is supported by the community. <clears throat> it's supported by memberships. A uh, large portion of our of our funding comes from the community, and uh, that's how we keep going. So we try to put that value. We try to to try to uh, ensure that people know the value of what we're trying to do, and they tell us that we're doing things right by supporting us. So uh, that's some of the stuff that uh, we we do. Here at CMTK. To, to be able to help launch here is this another avenue of us reaching out into the community, including Hazel to the surrounding area, to take some of our expertise and pass that on to people in a way that will hopefully empower you to create and be uh, become uh, to, to use the radio waves or to use the technology that we're passing on to you. Uh, in a way that will help uh, pass on your expertise and pass on your vision and your values and your excitement. That's the stuff that makes uh, living in the world we are right now so exciting. There's so many different avenues for people to reach out and reach communities and, and, and people that never was available before. And we're happy that as a radio station that we have a lot of that expertise and we're really excited about passing it on to you. Pam. Um, okay, so very quickly, I'll introduce myself. My name is Pam Hassan. I work at CICK Smithers Community Radio, um, sort of in two ways. I work in the news department, uh, where I'm the producer, and then I also am um, a bit of a gun for hire uh, for a number of other projects that we do at the station when we were doing live music and um, and some programming stuff and social media and that kind of thing. Um, so I really love working with CICK. I've also, um, just for kind of some context to why I was so excited to put on a podcast and broadcast workshop, I've produced uh, produced five of my own podcast series. I do short run series. That's my favorite way to do it. Uh, we can get into that later on in the workshop uh, in the coming weeks, but um, it is my preferred style of podcast series. And um, a question that I want each of you to think about while I'm going through the next couple of slides is I want you to kind of to ask yourself what you want to take away from this course and expectations that you have and I'd like to circle back to that but I'm just going to go through um, a couple of things about what to expect in this course so a couple of things you're going to learn some technical hard skills um, we're going to try to not uh, inundate you with too many um, with too much terminology or tech that you might not have access to, but I will also let you know about places in Houston, Hazleton, and two places in Smithers where we actually will give you access to the hardware that I'm going to be mentioning. But you know, we're gonna talk about Audacity, which is the free editing software program that works on both Mac and PC. So it is the friendliest um, software for editing if you don't currently have your own. Um, we're going to teach you how to find and get new music online legally, um, watching sound. So looking at editing and using your eyes to help you with editing, um, because your ears can get pretty fatigued and as well using CICK's equipment and software as previously mentioned and, and places that you can do that. We're also going to talk about technique or soft skills. So gathering information and research, depending on the type of show that you want to do, um, actually building your show. So thinking about it and planning it, and then um, giving yourself what, what I like to call a skeleton to build your show off of so that you don't feel like you have to make it up as you go along. Um, tips and tricks on how to interview people, if that's gonna be a part of your show, um, and as well, good sources um, and, um, you know, in, in, in my opinion, people who are just excellent at interviews, so places that you can listen and hopefully get some tricks from. As well, our presenters are going to be um, very helpful in helping you learn the craft of speaking publicly and then creating purpose and a vision for your show and sticking to it or what I like to call an aim is another soft skill that we hope that you're going to take away from this. We're also going to give you um, resources. Um, so where to find music, how to find and connect with guests how to make transitions in your show smoother or add more elements of sound to your show. And then lastly, feedback and practice. So, you know, when you're in a session like this, I think everyone kind of comes in with their own ideas of what they want to take away from it. But what we hope is that um, it's 
useful practical resources for, for you that you take away, but also that this time that we have together, um, especially in question and answer period, feel free to get into the nitty gritty. And if we are going too far off on a tangent, um, I know my, I, myself, I'm available and both Laura and I, and likely Glenn as well, are gonna stay on for a few minutes after each session, just to hopefully answer some questions if there's anything specific. So this is just very briefly what these sessions are gonna look like. So a little bit of an intro, first five minutes, then we're gonna get into um, uh, Laura, our first presenter tonight. Then we're gonna have a question and answer period. Then we're gonna go into a little more of the deep dive into some of the um, tech hard and soft skills that I had mentioned and then let you know what to uh, prepare for next week. So um, without further ado, I'd like to introduce our uh, presenter, our first presenter for the October podcast and broadcast series. I'm so happy that she said yes when I asked her she wanted to be involved in this workshop series. Uh, Laura is the host of uh, the show Scientia Coherence on CICK 93.9 FM and smithersradio.com on Fridays at 11 a.m. On her show, she talks about local science with scientists with stories ranging from the Bulkley Valley to Canada wide. With a passion for science communication and bridging the gap in, um, excuse me, in public and media understanding of science, she delves into a new topic every show with music brain breaks. Love that term. Laura has a bachelor of science in biotechnology and master's in science in interdisciplinary oncology. And she spends most of the year planning the best Halloween month ever. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our uh, first presenter, Laura Gilliam. Hi, <laughs> so I'm Laura. And yes, I've just started my show. I have about uh, eight uh, shows, episodes into it. Um, and I just wanted to start by telling you about my personal journey to getting onto the radio, which I think is the most I have to offer. I don't have a ton of uh, skills to impart upon you now, but more just to get you into that jump to get there because I've just done it myself. Uh, so this started, this is what I like to call my personal journey rainbow. And it started back when I was in grad school where I started noticing a growing demand for science journalism. So I was seeing scientists getting frustrated with the media and how they were, their work was being represented. So either the journalists not understanding the science or overhyping the results, as well as this growing divide in that we were making these huge technical advances in the last few decades, but the public's understanding of that was becoming less and less. So there's sort of this niche in, in there that I saw that could be filled. Uh, but here I am many years into a science degree where my writing skills were very focused on being as dry and technical as possible. <laughs> so how can I gain these skills? So while it seemed like an interesting thing to get into, I wasn't quite ready to really face gaining all these new skills. But with my decision to move from a big city to Smithers, I had to start thinking about a career shift. So I was motivated then to think about what else I could do with my degree because I couldn't work in a research lab anymore. And so while I've been doing paid work at a local environmental research company, I'm very much stuck in an office job, you know, doing project coordination. And so my free time has been spent researching on free online courses, reading books about journalism and science journalism, especially, but it still feels like a huge jump to make. So, you know, I'm reading about, oh, this is how you pitch an article to a science magazine. And I'm like, okay, well, that feels like a lot for, for me to do at this point in my life. Um, and I'm, I'm sort of a shy, nerdy person. So I, I usually like to play it safe. 
Uh, but being in Smithers, I was introduced to this amazing CICK community. So one of my very first friends, Megan, works for the station and I've watched other friends start their own shows and how much fun they have with it and how much they learn and how much they grow um, in personally with doing these shows. So it started to, to brew in my brain that, oh, this could be a way for me to gain some journalism skills, uh, start seeing what I needed to do to possibly go into that journalist career. And so I thought, okay, well, let's do a science-based show in Smithers because we have a wonderful science community. Um, there's lots of topics that I can choose from. And so I started talking with people on how to do that. And at first I thought with COVID, okay, yeah, I'll get that at home equipment and I'll pre-record. So sort of a podcasting style because I'm a bit of a perfectionist. I thought, yeah, I'll need to do, get a bunch of shows recorded they'll have to be perfect you know I'll have to have this buffer of you know if I have five shows already made then if I get busy in my life then you know I don't have to worry I'll have them ready to go however uh, as wonderful as the CICK staff was with getting the equipment helping me with setting it up getting the technical ready it still can be a challenge um, when you live in a small space with a young child and two cats, <laughs> you have to think about where you can actually set up and record and, you know, that it's not going to have background noise or echoes. And, and it just seemed like I kind of stopped at that point. I also, as a perfectionist, was not able to get very far in my recordings because they just never seemed good enough to me. And I thought, oh, well, if I'm pre-recording, then they have to be perfect. They like, there's this standard that I had in my mind. So uh, I really stalled for a few months until I, I suddenly clicked. I went, oh wait, this is actually radio. So it like, it's really cool to go live. And, you know, being a shy, nerdy person, it hadn't crossed my mind that I would go live before. And, and it just was like this epiphany of, you know what, I think I could do this. And it would actually force me to finally record a full show. <laughs> so thanks to Pam uh, being a great cheerleader and a great trainer, we got in there and I started recording. And now I've been doing a show every second week and it's I'm eight shows in and it's just gotten easier and more fun and it's and just great as the more I do it so you really got to jump out of your comfort zone and gain that confidence and also realize that you don't have to be perfect no one expects that from you um, except maybe yourself and you got to give yourself a break <laughs> so yeah uh, so just a little bit about how I make my shows. I start with my intro, which is usually the same for every show. You know, this is, I'm Lauren, this is Scientia Coherence. This is what my show is. We do a land acknowledgement and, and then I jump immediately into one song, which is uh, related to the topic. So I just did one on a bald eagle study. So I played Eagle by ABBA. And that was uh, jumping immediately into a song was a tip from, from Pam in that, you know, you can kind of get speaking, you know, break that uh, barrier of like, okay, here I am, I'm on the radio, I say my thing takes like 30 seconds, put on a song, breathe for a few minutes, and then you're ready to go on. Um, so then I just do a lead in. So I introduce the topics. Uh, I talk about where I got my information because sources are important and just some basics about what I'm gonna be talk talking about. And then I'll play some new Canadian songs usually. Uh, so we're using a program called Trello right now and 
CICK makes it really easy. I can just jump onto this program and there's all these new songs and they're labeled whether they're Canadian or, and also by genre, you know, are they rock songs, country songs, whatever. Um, so I try to find a couple brand new songs to play uh, and then get into the nitty gritty of the topic. And what I try to do is around five to 10 minutes of talking and then play one or two songs as a break. Uh, which I think it sounds good to me, at least when I listen to my shows, because the five to 10 minutes, it feels like just the right amount of talking uh, when you're when you're talking or when you're listening. And then you can enjoy some some new music and relax a little bit. Uh, yeah. And then at the end, I usually play another song that relates to the topic that's kind of fun to close it off. Um, and to find my topics, I look at our community. So we have the Bulkley Valley Research Center. That's been a great resource. A lot of places are recording workshops and seminars that they used to just do in person, but now they're over Zoom and they post them on YouTube. So you can listen to them later. So that's a great way to find some topics, either that or word of mouth, events around town. Um, if you're part of any organizations, like for me, uh, being an alumni of a university, they usually send out newsletters. And I also look up press releases to, to hear the brand new science stuff coming out of BC and um, the Google. <laughs> So for me, I like to use Google Scholar to find scientific articles, um, but also, you know, online news stories, uh, lots of other sites uh, like sciencenews.org. Um, yeah, I mean, the internet at your fingertips. So <laughs> get used to, the, to searching up your topic. And then also social media. So uh, connecting with people that you know that might have really interesting stories. It's a great way to reconnect with someone from your past. Um, you know, online communities, uh, you know, I'm part of some science communities where I can chat with people. And um, for me, I haven't really looked at like what's trending. I'm, I'm kind of an older millennial, so <laughs> that's something still kind of new to me, but I'm sure that uh, for others, you know, you can find out what's what's popular at the moment and, and cash in on that. <laughs> and yeah, that's pretty much uh, all I have for uh, how I do my show and how I got into it. So yeah, if you have any questions. And at this point, if anyone does have any questions, just unmute yourself and um, and uh, for the next yeah couple minutes, we can pepper Laura with difficult, detailed questions. <laughs> Laura, do you have guests or is it, I swear I haven't listened to it um, before, <laughs> um, but do you have guests? I want to, I haven't yet. I've done, uh, I've interviewed some people, but I've just taken notes and then, and then spoken about their answers on the radio. But yeah, something I actually am looking forward to this workshop to learn more about interviewing because uh, yeah, that's something new that I haven't dipped my toe in yet, but I want to. Laura, it's Chris. Do you have any difficulties translating um, visual aspects of science into uh, just straight words? Great question. Absolutely. Yeah, I recently, did a show on the immune system and that I thought was gonna be an easy topic because it's something I studied in the past, but I found it really difficult. Like I would look at wonderful YouTube videos people had made where in 10 minutes they explained really complex things, but they had the advantage of these animations. Um, so yeah, it can, it can be a challenge for sure. Yeah, a picture is worth a thousand words, so. <laughs> I think that was a great question, Chris. And mm -hmm. I wondered, Laura, what, 
what would you do differently if your show as you had previously planned was a recorded show versus what you do live like do you feel like there's limitations to doing it live or did you kind of fast forward on skills what what do you think you would do differently had it been pre-recorded aside from take longer (laughs) (laughs) well I don't think it would be very different it was still very much my idea that I had in the beginning is what I'm doing now um except I haven't gotten into the interviews yet I didn't plan on putting in lots of clips of things like sound effects or stuff like that which I'm sure would be easier if you're pre-recording so no I think it's pretty much the same excellent um well if no one else has a question right now what we can do is we can move on and as mentioned Laura if you wouldn't mind sticking around after the workshop session and if people have more questions for you if you would answer them then but thank you so much Laura for that presentation um I know as a listener of your show and seeing you on the first day that you did your show like actually being in the studio with you the first day that you did your show uh there's just this like there's just this confidence that you have now and you don't you're you're really kind of walking past that point that very beginner's point where you sound like you're reading when you are reading quite like when you are reading your script and I can hear it now there's just this almost naturalness in your cadence of reading and I think it's just really awesome that you got there in eight episodes because really that's some very fast learning (laughs) well thank you that is something I worry about obviously I have a lot of notes I try to put them in bullet points so I'm not reading a sentence by sentence but yeah there's something I worry about is that I just sound like I'm reading something <laughs> yeah that is the fear as someone who does that and then I, I actually have a recording of uh my partner hearing me read read something and I have a clip of him going why are you talking like that you don't talk like that and it's like oh god this is my podcast voice which we'll get into later on is the inevitable podcast voice but once again thank you Laura <laughs> Um, I want to move on now because uh, just we are uh, getting a little bit tight for time here, but to move on to ask everybody, I would like to um, ask you what type of show you want to make. So I'm sure by joining this uh, workshop series that you do have something in mind, but this question for this session is very literal. Further in the course, we will help to you to carve out a more detailed idea about what you want your show to become. Um, But we're starting today with a raw lump of clay and we're just talking, I'm going to just start talking about the two different types of shows that you can possibly make. So the first one is live, much like Laura, uh, like Laura's show, my show, Glenn's show, um, you know, Megan, when she hosts lounge car sessions as well is it's, it's live. So you can do it a couple of ways. You can go on air live on 93.9 FM, obviously. Uh, You can also do Facebook live or YouTube live, but whichever it is, it's that you know that from when you hit go and you're starting to stream or you hit the on air button and you're starting to speak or you're starting to play music in the studio, that that's it. Your show has officially started now. Um, While you may employ clips, background music and interviews, you're the producer of your show and you are acting as the host. So you wear many hats, which at first seems very daunting, I think, when you're thinking about doing something live, but you really get used to psyching yourself up for the rhythm of your show and planning that show to go as well as it can, but allowing, as my next point mentions here, your mistakes to go live. Um, something that I love about radio and why I love the medium of radio is that there is an element of danger and there's an immediacy to Uh, a live performance and not scripting what you can say and you can script what you want to say for a live show but not scripting it can make for some very fun audio as well so I think that the point is is either to be born a very confident person or be prepared which is more of us than the confident one so um I'm hoping that this clip plays but I do want to just play you a quick clip of um a show that we have on the station here called uh, brothers on band. So, um, Laura, cause I can see your screen. Would you give me a thumbs up if you can hear the audio? Great. Okay. Oh man. That was focused by Hocus Pocus. It was the best song I ever made. 
That song came out the in... Worst song ever. <laughs> I don't know when that song came out. Probably the 70s. Yeah. Aren't they from Denmark or something? That's a good point. Uh, <laughs> that's a good point. They are from Denmark. Good point. No, um, that's a good question. I thought Hocus Pocus has been Ooh, songs. They're from the Netherlands. Is um, that different? Yeah, they were uh, probably uh, made that song in the Red Light District. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, the Netherlands is not Denmark. No. What's the Netherlands? People from the Netherlands are Dutch. Oh, then, oh, yeah. They both start with B. I don't. What's the Netherlands? I don't understand. The Netherlands is a place where there's. Oh, in Amsterdam. Oh. Or is it? No, that's what I meant. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, you were right. They're born. Oh, and they were formed in 1969, which oh. was the year of uh, our mother's birth. Happy birthday, mom. <laughs> Dave Grohl's birth. Oh. It's a sign. Okay, so while that's very silly, uh, something that's great about community radio is one that they, you can turn on the dial. And I remember when I heard that, um, when I heard that happen live, uh, I was just stuck in, weirdly enough in Smithers, I was stuck in traffic. Um, but it was like the day after the parade. And I'm just listening and it's like raining and I'm tired and I just want to get home. And I, my radio is on the dial on 93.9 FM. And it's just the Wendell brothers figuring out where the heck the Netherlands is. And the difference between Denmark and Holland. And I'm just killing myself laughing. And that's the kind of thing that, like, because of the level of imperfection of that, that might be something that you would generally never put in your podcast. But it's something that can happen live. And I just think that that's, there's, there's a beauty. And again, that immediacy and the element of danger to it that I just really, really dig. Um, so then, so there's the live show, which again, you, it doesn't have to sound exactly like the Wendell Brothers, but uh, you know, it doesn't hurt if it does. Um, and then there's recorded. So these can still be radio shows. And the way that I'm speaking about um, shows today, podcast and radio, they are not separate. They are not different. Um, we, we can get into that a little bit further as well, but spoken word or music show or not, you're going to be you know, you're going to be um, introducing and sharing ideas with people, whether it is through mostly music and a little bit of talk or whether it's through only talk or whether it's through interviews. Um, now, if you do do a recorded show, you will use a DAW to record and that is an acronym for Digital Audio Workspace. So uh, as mentioned, when I said Audacity before, that is a DAW, um, there's many different ones, but you would record onto something. So you could record it onto Audacity. You can record onto your phone if you want. Um, you will spend about four times as long editing as you will recording when you pre-record a show. Um, it, it kind of is the nature of the beast. Some people just put their show out live and just let it be. Tim Ferriss, for example, like, you know, an episode of his podcast will be two hours and 40 minutes long. Um, but generally, you kind of have an idea and you're trying to get there with the interviews and clips that you do and the music that you play. So you can record intros, segues and clips, and that saves a lot of time and also gives you a unified sound. So by that, I mean, you would just have the same intro. So if your show is at two o'clock on Thursdays, when people hear that sound, they know that that means that your show is starting. It also means that you don't have to recreate it every time. So even if you want to mostly do a live show, bring elements of recorded podcasting into it because it just saves you that time. As Laura and I discussed, it gives you like a, mo a breather moment at the very beginning of your show that you can also be mentally prepared to start presenting your thoughts on air. Um, Scripting is your friend, depending on the style of your show, as mentioned, but um, I used to co-host a show back in London, Ontario, and even though it was a, it felt like a fly by the seat of your pants show, I was scripting most of what I said. It, this is including just the back sell and how I was talking about music that I just played. You can ask yourself if you want your recorded show to feel live, but you just maybe can't do it at that time that's available, or you're trying to work with someone else and you have to do it via Zoom, or you two can only meet on a lunch break or whatever, um, but you want it to feel live, there are very easy ways to do that. It just includes putting a timer for yourself and sticking to the time, the allotted time that you've given yourself. Um, 
And also if you record it, you can shape your show to fit the narrative to you and use many voices uh, if you like. So again, that's just going to be using editing, but that's also a nice benefit to recording is if you have a topic and you have multiple different um, voices and people's perspectives on it, by editing it, you can make sure that it's, you know, the 30 minutes that your show is supposed to be. And also you can, as we say in audio, trim the fat of just the parts that you don't really want um, the parts of it that you're not gonna you're not gonna eat. You're not, you don't want to keep those parts of it anyway. You just really want um, the meatiest portion of an answer. Um, it's 15 minutes now, so um, I'm going to uh, move along to where to find music for your show. So this is where I'm going to ask Glenn if he's yeah. Uh, where I'm going to ask Glenn to um, briefly speak about what resources exist to finding music that you can play on your show with the artist's permission. And then I'll speak about places, a uh, place that you can find music um, uh, that is copyright free and you don't need the artist's permission. So uh, Glenn, if you're on here, there we go. Yeah, um, feel free. All right. Uh, okay, well, so digital music, uh, there was a time. And there's still, we're still kind of moving away from physicals, but there was a time when majority of the music that we got at the station came through to us uh, in the form of physical CDs. And we still have a, a library in the radio station that has over 5,000 CDs. Uh, and uh, you can access them through a database that you use through our website and you can look up, you know, uh, any any pretty a lot of different artists and you'll find them specifically we, we get a lot of canadian independent kind of artists uh but we have uh moved in the last year to a digital um solution or digital music library that's accessible not only in the station but anywhere you we've been experimenting with several different methods uh the one that we have been using most frequently over the last year is something called trello and anybody who knows trello is basically an organizing tool and we use that organizing tool to basically organize uh music and uh we had the help of um a music director in london ontario who cram that tool full of new music every week and when i say cram i mean anywhere between 20 to 30 new uh, albums a week or more. Uh, it really depends, it goes in waves. And you would have the op option of, of access at, uh, at any time on your, and that allows us to use this music anytime we want. Um, now, there are some, stuff about podcasts that you guys will learn about later about what's allowed in podcasts some places will are, are not super happy about using music in podcasts um but as far as radio station goes uh, programming on the station uh any kind of music uh, is allowed within certain um <laughs> constraints i mean we don't want music that could potentially be harmful or hurtful for for people listening so um, we are moving towards uh, uh, another um, partnership with other stations where we're all going to share the, the amount of work that goes into um, putting music into, the, into a digital solution. So we are experimenting with some other online databases called uh, Jellyfin and Plex, and those may, may or may not be familiar to you, but they work in the same way as Trello, and, and they, you may get an opportunity to see this. I'm not sure if Pam's going to show you, but... Um, this is uh, just different ways of doing the same thing. Searching, well, synopsis, what is a one paragraph synopsis of the music or what is this stuff going to sound like? Is it Canadian content? Uh, th th there's all sorts of information you can, you can get from taking a look at it really quickly online and then throwing it into your show uh, is, is the last step. So... Yeah, that's basically it. Uh, CSK is a resource for amazing um, music all around the world, primarily a lot of, and a lot of it is unreleased so or pre-released. So that's the other kind of cool thing is you can be playing music that nobody has heard of before or there may be very familiar bands, but it's a pre-release and so everybody gets a chance to hear it before anyone else. So that's kind of cool. Yes, and that makes you feel like a real radio station too when you get access to music that um, 
that hasn't been released yet, but that the artists have sent out to radio stations for airplay. Um, next, I'm going to uh, talk about, and this again is a little more of the, um, for podcasters, uh, but also this is something that you can use if you are doing live radio as well, as just an added element to your show to have background music. So, and that clip that I played, that Brothers on Bands clip that I played, um, if you noticed that there was a bit of silence after the uh, Hocus Pocus Focus songs, you know, the band from the Netherlands, um, they had music, but there was a moment of like a silence and then this music kind of came in in the background. Um, well, if you if you do want to employ that or if you want intro music for your podcast, for your recorded podcast, I suggest using Free Music Archive. Um, this is a online database of copyright free music that anyone can access and you there are no limits to how many songs you can download on free music archive. Um, it's searchable by genre and all it asks is that you say thank you to the artist um, in your credits if you do wind up uh, using a song from free music archive. So um, I just very briefly want to show you um, what I mean, so you don't want to go to pro, you want to go to search FMA, which stands for Free Music Archive. And the first place that I always go is genres, instrumental, because if it's something that I want to speak over, I don't want to have um, a voice already speaking something. And again, the reason why I say Free Music Archive is better than something like Pond5 is because Pond5 is a paid for. And even if you think that you're going to start getting something for free, it'll be like, pond five and it'll just be this really loud like it's so frustrating and annoying um and you can avoid that by using free music archive and uh you can so like there are just and also there's like look there's eleven thousand pages of instrumental music that you can download here on free music archive and you can uh preview it by pressing the play button here and um so there it is and if you like it you can download it um, by by just selecting this little download button here. Sorry, I don't know if it's gonna let me download it because I'm um, presenting right now. I don't think it will. Anyway, um, I'm just going to close that very quickly. Oh, there we go. Yeah, if I do wanna download it, then I say understand and agree, and it tells me who it's by and the name of the song. So I don't really need to download that right now. So I'm just going to say I understand and agree anyway, because that's the only way I can get out of this um okay getting back to it so that's free music archive now um at the end of this at the end of every um workshop that we have we will put our i'm going to send a link out to everyone um, where you can get these slides again so that you can while you can write things down you can also have access to it later um getting into um a, a hard skill which i think is a very important one to start thinking about again with this being session one of three of special thing is um, learning how to talk into a microphone. If you've not done that before, um, it's not as uh, it's not as natural as you might think it is because we move our heads a lot when we talk. Uh, if you're like me, you know, you put your hands in front of your mouth or something like that and or you turn your head. So at the station, we use directional or condenser microphones uh, and directional or condenser means that there is a front and there's a back to that microphone. Um, and so you want to speak into it correctly and it's a more precise instrument with more dynamic range. So for us, it's perfect for studio use. Uh, something that's not exactly technical is keep about a fist length away from the mic when speaking. So that's as far away as roughly you want to be. So here's my mic, well, here's my microphone and I want to be about a fist length away. Um, talk directly into the mic and try not to turn your head too much and always wear headphones during your show or when you're recording so that you can hear your levels because you might not always be looking at your audio um, and you don't notice that your um, channel level isn't up or that the mute button on your microphone is on or that for instance, as happened to me in one of my interviews, I had the microphone backwards. So I just didn't hear anything that the person said. Um, very briefly, and very quickly, here's some uh, sound examples of when it's not groovy. Hi everybody and thanks so much for participating in this workshop. This is me speaking into the front of my condenser microphone. This is me speaking into the back of my condenser microphone. I've now put it back in front of me but now my face is turned away to the left and then I've come back toward it and now I'm talking to the right again even though I'm still trying to keep my voice relatively uniform in volume when I'm speaking. 
without trying to exaggerate, this is how my voice sounds when I am basically trying to eat the microphone. And then this is me at the same volume when I'm just too far away from it. This is about a fist away, and this is what we call the sweet spot. So it's sometimes just easier to let you know how poorly uh, you can do when you're not really thinking of it. People have a lot of verbal tics. People have a lot of, um, uh, you have, what's the word? Like, um, <laughs> you have things that you do with your head that you don't notice until you either watch yourself on video or you try to speak into a microphone and you listen back to it. But the, the most important tool that anyone can take away is to listen to what you record. You learn so much by just listening to it and you learn so much from your own mistakes. Um, okay, so um, I only have uh, this slide and, and one more next, which is just gonna tell you what's going on next week. Uh, we pretty much made it to right to the hour, which is nice, so well done. Laura and Glenn and all of our participants here. Um, I do want to see if you have questions or comments now. So we're going to open that up in a moment. Very quickly, I would like to let you know what to expect for next week. So next week will be a bit more, um, it's going to be a little more technical and there's going to be a little more um, to take away as well. We're going to start getting into actually put like actually figuring out what your show is putting it together using clips so it won't be a lot of heavy editing or anything like that but just we hope that we're going to help you start to actually do that work to take your show from an idea that you tell people at parties to something that you can share a link to and say no if you want to hear my show, yeah just listen to that show it's right there um so something that i would like you to um to, for participants to do is think of uh, think of and find examples of shows that you like and you can make one or two notes about why you like a show so you can pick a favorite if you want if there's just one I mean there probably isn't there's probably more than one but pick maybe one that's either new to you or something that's it's something you'd like to go back to um, and what you like about that show um, things that you can consider is is it the style of the show you know is it a round table of people that you would love to be sitting down at and listening to anyway is it the music choice of a show on the radio? Is it banter that they have, production, content, whatever it is. We also implore you to find an example from CICK, our local radio station. Um, and you can go to smithersradio.com and you can click on schedule and you can listen to everyone's show because we actually have um, the show plus the playlist up for every live show that someone does. It goes onto our website immediately after, which is very cool. Um, so uh, again, you'll get the, I'm gonna drop um, a couple of links into the chat before everyone leaves. And um, so what to expect next week, same, same time, uh, 7 p.m. It'll be next Wednesday, October 20th. And um, we're gonna do just a quick recap, like two minutes of what we covered this uh, week. Then we're gonna be talking about journalism and community radio, uh, making and making a skeleton of your show. Then our presenter will be Dan Messick, who um, is the news journalist for CSEK News. We're gonna have a bit of a question and answer uh, period then. Then we're gonna get into using Audacity, editing, finding resources, and go over um, some of the examples of shows that I just um, mentioned for you to think of and to listen to and to make some notes on. And then of course, we'll do one more for what to prepare for the last week, um, which will be the third session. So. Um, I'm going to drop the link in right now um, for next week's Zoom. And uh, I would also implore anyone to unmute yourself while I'm dropping these links. And if you have questions about this session, next session, or if you have questions for um, Laura or just a comment, please feel free to unmute yourself and, uh, and go hog wild. Okay, can everyone see Trello? Okay, great. So um, the beauty of Trello is that it's all online. And what I like to describe Trello as is the closest thing to flipping through records digitally. It's the closest thing that I've ever found. Because as you see all of our new albums here in this board, I'm looking at just the, uh, I'm looking at the cover of the album, but also I'm looking for things like this red line that tells me that it's Canadian. I know that everything that's on Trello in this on this board is new, unless we've moved it to an archived board. Um, it's it's only new music that's on here. 
And why that's important as well is for CICK shows, depending on the genre of your show, um, you uh, are required by the CRTC, the Canadian Radio Television Communication uh, Commission, Canadian Radio and Television Communication Commission, um, you have to play a certain amount. So for my show, I have to play 30% new and Canadian music. So this is a great resource for me to find that. Um, if you click on, let's just click on Christian North, it opens up to give you a description of this album. R-I-Y-L, if you don't know what that stands for, that stands for recommended if you like. And so this is telling me that if I like things like Beck and LCD Sound System, Mayor Hawthorne, Tuxedo, Jamie Lydell, that I would probably like this as well. Then I go down here and each of these attachments is a song that I can preview. And I'll just show you that. Oh, places, wide open spaces. And if I like it, Ooh, it's groovy. If I like it, I can download it. And then it's then I can play that show on my, or I can play that song on my show if I like. So what's cool about this is how accessible it is, but also that we are sent these albums from either management promotions or the artists themselves. So we're given access to be able to play and download this music. Now we only share this with our members because members and uh, members and programmers sign an agreement that um, we're playing, we're downloading these for use on our shows um, for which the station, um, you know, we have a license to play this music. Um, and so it, it is a little bit of responsibility, um, but with great swaths of music comes some responsibility. And so uh, we hope that um, this resource is something that, um, that actually gets people pretty excited. Like, look at all this, look at all this music. And this is all new music. If this makes you dizzy, it is dizzying. I'm not even a third of the way through all the new music that's been sent to our station. So um, yeah, we're really, really proud to have Trello and whether it ends up being Trello, Jellyfin or Plex, the, um, the place that it is doesn't really matter. It's that CICK is working with um, smaller stations like ourselves to actually um, fix what's a very generally complained about issue with small radio stations is we can't afford, we, we, we don't have a music director. Um, we can't find volunteers to bring in all these CDs that are getting sent to us. So the music that's being sent to us is not getting played, um, which then means that our programmers don't really use the station as a resource to find music. And so this kind of just answers, makes all those questions go away. Not to mention that we started this, we employed this before the pandemic. So then when the pandemic hit and people weren't coming into the station at all, we were still actively sharing tons of new music with people. Um, okay, uh, well, listen, it's 11 minutes after eight and I do like to try to keep these as tight as possible. So um, thank you everybody so much for joining us for this workshop session. Again, there, um, there's another one next Wednesday night, same time. Thank you so much to Laura, our presenter for today. I'm so happy that you said yes when I asked and uh, I took a lot away, even though I already knew about your show, I still took a lot away from your presentation. Um, so thank you so much. And yeah, feel free to pop off everybody. I'm gonna stay on just a little bit longer to grab some of the email addresses that you sent me, but um, yeah, thanks again. And hopefully we see you next week. <laughs>